Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're going to do another experiment. We're going to see if we can craft our stash and our trash to make these milk cans for under a dollar for both of them. Stay tuned. <laughs> So I'm going to be using these funnels from the Dollar Tree. You get all three for a dollar. I'm using an old creamer container, a mason jar, some straws, and then I'm showing you these chalkboard things, chalkboard signs. <laughs> I'm not using them because I'm trying to stay under that dollar. You're going to need a saw. I wish I would have had some silver or metallic spray paint, but this is all I had on hand. And then some acrylic paint and Waverly chalk paint and folk art chalk paint. Just different colors to get that metal look. I am going to be using newspaper, E6000, hot glue, and duct tape. And first you're going to remove the packaging or label, whatever you want to call it, from the creamer jug. And I tested one out to make sure I could cut through this, and you could. So you want to cut the bottom off of these um, funnels. I'm using the medium size and the small size for both of these projects. You're also going to want to cut that little lip handle, whatever it is, off the side of them. I'm sorry, I'm going to be flipping back and forth a few times going between projects in this video just because there were certain things I did to both at the same time. So you're going to want to cut the top of your creamer and then you're going to want to cut the funnel again and rough down, you can see down those rough edges. So the small funnel is going to go in the mason jar, the bigger funnel is going to go in the creamer. So, I used a little bit of hot glue to attach these. Hot glue and plastic does not work well. I thought I could hurry up and do it without it melting, but it did melt a little bit. That's where the duct tape comes into play. So, plan B. Using the duct tape, I tried to secure these. Now, granted, there was a little bit of hot glue still. Using those straws, and mine were already silver. You can use any straw for this because you're going to paint them anyway. Flatten them as good as you can, and then kind of just maneuver it around to try to make a handle out of this. Using a screwdriver, I went through the plastic on both sides to attach that handle. Then I came in with my hot glue gun and just used that hot tip of it to make these holes bigger. So I'm basically using my hot glue gun to melt those holes and make them a little bit bigger so that I could feed the straws through, which worked perfect. The handles, the straw handles fit through the plastic. They held into place. I used a little hot glue around the edges, but yeah, I'm crooked. <laughs> They're not the same on each side. <laughs> oh well. So using that same straw technique, I did the handle for the mason jar too. And here's where it gets a little wonky. Hot glue and glass don't go well together. I was using the hot glue to get that handle on there. Um, and then I don't know where I was thinking I could go from here. I knew using E6000 right now wasn't going to... I had nothing to hold it in place while it dried. So we go back to duct tape. Cut a little bit of duct tape and put it in the center of that handle to try to attach both ends um, and then came back later on I'll show you I did use E6000 um, to secure them down I had to it it wasn't working the duct tape or the hot glue so live and learn I did get them to stick though so that was a bonus and unexpected those are a little more symmetrical than the other one aren't they did a little better so I used some, just some white acrylic paint, and I painted this all white. I wasn't sure how this was going to dry, so basically I didn't even need to do this because the next step, I cover it all up anyway. Like I said, this is an experiment. Using some folk art metallic, I painted 
the whole mason jar, the handles, the funnel, everything in that metallic gray. Now this really, I love this folk art metallic gray when I'm doing like galvanized pieces because it is just the perfect color. I'm almost out of it, I need more. And so here's, like I said, this is an experiment. I really didn't know how to make the creamer one into a milk can, so I'm kind of winging it. So I thought since I could see the duct tape through the paint, maybe I could decoupage this with some newspaper. So I put some Mod Podge in water, mixed up a little mixture, dipped these newspapers into it, and then just proceeded to cover the whole creamer. I knew I wasn't going to have a smooth um, milk can at this point, so I was going for that dented, old, been in the shed and got dinged up milk can. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going to call it. So I used that newspaper and I went around the whole um, creamer bottle, going in between the handles, and covered up that duct tape. Once I painted that duct tape, you could really see that it was not going to blend in. I originally thought with the duct tape that I could have it be like maybe the welded part of the milk can. You know, this wasn't going to be perfect. I'm using trash to create a milk can. So I knew I wasn't going to get a perfect milk can out of this. I was just trying my little experiment to get it as close to looking like a milk can and something that I could use with my decor. I love the mason jar milk can, not liking this one too much. I kind of defeated myself right at the beginning of this project with this one because when I used the hot glue to attach the funnel, it melted the plastic creamer and it was crooked and it was like wonky, lopsided. So I think like in my head, I was already defeated with this one, but I was determined to see it through and see what I could get the end result looking like. So I decoupage the whole thing, going for that dented milk can look. And then I spray painted it. And like I told you at the beginning, I only had this color of spray paint I didn't mind. I like this blue, so I didn't mind if this came through. I wanted this milk can to be white. That wasn't happening because the white was showing every single imperfection that there was, and there was a lot of them. <laughs> so we are going galvanized on this one also. So using the folk art in metallic, using black, using truffle, using this kind of gold metallic paint I had. I'm just trying to go over this and make it look semi-galvanized. Um, and then I came back in with that truffle and the gold to make it a little rusted looking. And actually, I did not mind this after I was done. I didn't mind that it looked way better galvanized than it did white. <laughs> So at this point, I'm like, okay, maybe this will work. There's hope for this after all. I also want to tell you, I wish I would have, I know I cut the creamer jug. I wish I would have cut it lower so that there wasn't as big of a neck on this. That might have helped this project. That might have made it look more like a milk can. Um, then I came in with some white and the white made this pop. It blended. I'm doing this all simultaneously. I'm not letting it dry. So when I came in with the white, it was blending in with that metallic. It was blending in with the black. I was getting a really nice gray um, old metal look. Not so much galvanized, but old tin can metal look. So I was starting to think this was going to work and that I was going to like this one when I was done. The white really made this come alive. Then I came in with the truffle and that gold metallic paint and tried to just sporadically go all around it, making it rusted. If it's going to be dented, I figured it should have some rust in there too. 
So it helped a little bit, so I wasn't happy. I ended up putting two coats on the mason jar just to have that real metal look. I like the duct tape on the mason jar because it looks like it's welded. And I did use E6000 on the handles. I lifted them up a little bit and got that E6000 in there to secure them. Now using the same colors I did on the other one, I'm gonna try to get this a galvanized look just by layering, layering, layering <laughs> all of these colors. sure to do the same effect on the top inside of the funnel also so that it would all match and you wouldn't be able to see any um well it was already painted you weren't going to be able to see any white or anything anyway I just wanted it all to match so I went inside the top of the funnel also Now using that metallic gold and truffle actually mixed together, I'm just going to add some rust onto this around the edges, around the handles, around the bottom, um, around where the duct tape is, just like any grooves I thought would be rusted. And I'm loving this one. This one is so cute. Oh my gosh, it's so little. And it really looks like an old milk can. It has like that galvanized look. The rust really makes it pop. This one I'm really loving. <laughs> So using tin foil instead of those little chalkboards, I'm going to make a label for this. I opted not to use the chalkboards because really, if you use like a spaghetti jar or pizza or pizza sauce jar or something like that, you, this project costs you like 66 cents in materials plus paint. So I was trying to stay under that dollar for both projects. So that's why I did not use those chalkboards. So I just cut a piece of tin foil, I crinkled it all up, and I cut a circle out of it. And using the truffle and the uh, metallic gold, I put that over the tin foil to give it just a rusted uh, metal label. And I wanted that old, like it's been sitting around forever label on it. Now I'm coming in, this was part of my stash, and I had these rub-on decals that you can get at Dollar Tree. I've never used them before. Because I liked the little milk can so much, I wanted to use them on this. And I was pleasantly surprised at how amazing these are. You just cut out what you want, which I did an N and an O for number. I did a period and then I did one to label this number one. Um, but you just cut out what you want and you rub it on and you peel it off. These are amazing. I cannot believe you can get these at Dollar Tree. I was so happy with the end result and how simple and easy it was. So if you see these at your Dollar Tree, when we can go shopping again, grab a few because it only comes one per pack. 
So if you want to do a long word with these, you probably won't have enough in the package. You'll have to have more than one. And that turned out so cute. It looks like a little rusted label. And I wasn't quite sure how to attach tin foil to glass. <laughs> so why not try Mod Podge? And it worked. I put some Mod Podge on the back of it, used my finger, rubbed it all around, and then just kept pushing it down onto the glass and worked perfectly. First time attaching basically tinfoil to any project and I liked it. It turned out nice. I used the rest of what I had on my finger and just went over the front of it just a little bit and around the edges making sure that the tinfoil was securely um, attached to the glass. So my experiment. Creamer milk can fail. Did not like it. Mason jar milk pan, can success, loved it. I put some flowers in this one just to show you the dented, been in the barn forever <laughs> milk can, no matter what. I, I just wasn't liking this one. Um, I After filming, I tossed it. I actually, <laughs> what was I down? 33 cents for a funnel. Now this one is still on my shelf. It is so cute. It's so little. It looks just like a milk can. It's right next to one of the milk cans I purchased at Marshall's. And it is adorable. I put some wildflowers in it. And I absolutely love this milk can. So thanks again, guys, for coming on this experiment with me. I've done quite a few of these, actually. I did a cubby experiment with ice trays. I did an experiment using popsicle sticks to make a shutter, and now I use my craft to stash trash <laughs> to see if I can make some milk cans. You know, you got to be creative during these times when you can't go shopping, so just start saving your containers and things, I don't know, just unusual items you might not have saved you might have just thrown away you never know what you can do with them so keep them on hand i hope you guys enjoyed this video it was so much fun to make if you did and haven't already consider subscribing to my channel hit that like button it helps my channel channel out can't speak as usual and ring that bell for future notifications my next video is going to be I'm not going to call it an experiment because I know where I'm going with this one, but it's going to be so fun to do. My next video, I'm going to try to recreate a vintage lunchbox from when we were little. So don't miss it. It'll be on Friday. I love y'all. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful and blessed day. See you soon. Bye, y'all.